Welcome back to another video guys, let's have a look at some more rope work. So welcome back guys to another video and as I say in this one we're going to take a look at some more rope work. We did a video not that long ago on some fundamental rope skills and I'll leave a link up here as usual to that video. video we focused on some small skills and some useful stuff that fit very well with our tarps and things like that. In this one we're going to take a look at doing some skills with this much larger uh, official climbing rope here with some other things in mind as well so we're going to have a look at both where it's useful in bushcraft and the outdoors but also where it might be useful in everyday life. This is actually something that I find myself doing probably about two or three times a year where I actually just come out with this big rope here and practice some of these skills so we're going to have a look at a few different things today. Um, as I say, this is a much larger rope. This is, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. So I do want to quickly preface this video in saying that I am not a climber, nor am I a rope expert, but rope work is one of my uh, main skills set in the outdoors. So I feel at least semi-confident in filming this video. So the first thing that I want to talk about is a knot that has so many purposes and it is probably one of the first knots you should really learn if you're going to spend time in the outdoors and it is the bowline. Now we're going to start by demonstrating this tying it to an object. I'm also, which in this case is going to be this sycamore tree here, I'm also going to show you how to just tie it loose and then I'm also going to show you how to tie it uh, round yourself, both the slowed down and normal way as well as the quick one semi one-handed method so to tie the bowlin we come around the tree or our object that we're tying to in this case it's the sycamore tree giving ourselves a reasonable bit of slack here with in because i'm right-handed i find it easiest to put the long end into my left hand which is here we then want to create a loop in the long end to do that we simply twist a loop like so. Now the loop, it's important that it does two things. One, it needs to be on the inside of our two pieces, so it's here, not here. And two, it needs to go underneath. So you see that my running end here goes underneath the loop, not that which would be over the top. You then take your free end, come out of that loop from underneath, pass it underneath the loose end that goes to the ground, like so, and then pass it back down through that loop we created. You then grab the running end and the bit next to it and pull tight and there you have a bowline. The bowline is a very distinct shape. Now the important thing, if you have done a bowline correctly, the loose, or the tail, it's not loose, but the tail should be on the inside of the loop. So once you have your bowline there, what you can do is add an extra security knot and the simplest way to do that is to take your running end that's on the inside, cross it over your line, bring it up back through, cross it over again but this time coming to the left which creates this X shape, bring it back up on the left and pass the end through the middle of that X from left to right. That creates that shape. And now that is definitely not going anywhere. So continuing with the bowl in here, um, sometimes you might need to tie a bowl in just to the end of a rope without tying it to something. So to do that, you kind of just have to imagine that there is something. So create a fold or whatever in the rope and imagine that there is that tree there 
and it's as simple as just creating that loop. Don't know why I'm making it so big. Simple as create that loop on the inside, which that is not. So pretend that's where your tree is. Create that loop onto the inside. Pass the end out, around, and down and through. And there you have a loose bowline. A bowline just straight into the end of a rope. Slightly too long of a tail there. But that might be useful if you need to... Um, you might then put a carabiner onto that. And be able to clip that to something. Or things along those lines. Now there is one more thing with the bowline. Which is of course its use of tying it to yourself. Now for a long time emergency services and rescue services recommended that people learn this. Now as far as I'm aware they don't recommend it anymore because they're concerned that people will make a mistake and it will cause more injury and death. But as someone that knows it, I would use it. So, I'm going to show you this both in terms of the same method that I just showed you but round you as the object but also a quick method which is the kind of survival -y rescue method as it were. So bring this around yourself. Now if you are actually going to be using this to abseil or to be rescued or whatever, they sometimes they do say that you could put it, run this through the belt loops on your trousers or shorts in this case um, and that will just stop it from moving about on your body. But they also vary where they tell you to do it. Some people might say to do it around the hip. Some people say to tie it around underneath the armpits because that's where they'll be able to, say, airlift you. When I'm practicing, I'm tying it down around my waist. So, simple as it is round you. Again, in, when I'm tying it around myself, the loose end is in my right hand. All you have to do is create a loop underneath towards yourself, so into the middle with, and I tend to prop that up with my finger, it's then as simple as pass it through that loop, underneath, and back through. Now if I was tying it to myself I would very much definitely tie that extra security knot there and I certainly wouldn't leave such a short tail, but th that would work. Now in this case that's far too big of a gap, if you were actually needing to use it to rescue either yourself or someone else, you would want to keep it as tight to yourself as you physically can. Even that would probably be too loose because you'll see it will move. Unless of course you are going for the under the armpits as that will very well work because you know most of us aren't carrying a harness with them everywhere we go. Now, the quick method which I'm not a master at by any means but it's certainly quicker it's kind of hard to demonstrate. It's kind of hard to explain, but I will demonstrate it. So I'm going to demonstrate it um, slowly, and then I'll do it as fast as I physically can. So what you do is you come up over and you pull the lines out in front. You then take the loose, the short end in your right hand, because I'm right-handed. Pass it over the top of the left one, so you kind of cross them. You then take it down. And you then take it up through, so what it does is it creates a triangle in front of you. And you want to take it up through that triangle. And it then wraps itself around your fingers and your hand and your wrist like that. So I'll just quickly do that bit again. Out in front, cross over, down, up and through. You've still got a hold of this loose end and you've still got a hold of this standing end. You then pass the loose end underneath the standing end and the loop that is around your hand is the loop that we normally tie in the uh, left hand when we're doing it the normal method so then all we do is we pass this short end back through that loop and we pull our wrist uh, we pull that loop off and that pulls a bowl in. I'll do it slightly quicker and then uh, while still explaining it and then I'll try it as fast as I can so again out in front cross over up through, pass round, and through. Now, what I find is I have to use my left hand to pull the loop off my wrist. 
I have seen people, I know people that can do it without that and somehow the risk comes out. I have no idea how, um, but this is still nice and quick. So we'll go ahead, we'll try and do this as quick as I can. Under the pressure of the camera, it might fail, but we'll see what happens. So there you go. That's the quick method, I'll do that once again. So I won't talk it, because if I talk it, I'll mess it up. Ah, messed it up anyway. Missed the grab. And that ties a bowl in. Now, what I would say is when you do the quick method, it's kind of difficult to um, leave yourself enough to then do the extra knot, because you would kind of have to work with a bit rather than the end, and it's, but you could always feed more through. And certainly with a climbing rope, you'll find that it never pulls solid. Um, so you will be able to kind of tension it through. And then once you put your weight on it, of course, it will be. And that is the thing that with a bowline, it will not go anywhere. So if I've got that tied by myself, maybe through my belt loops. Now, of course, when I say you could tie it through your belt loops, it's of course not going to be putting the pressure on the belt loops. The pressure is going to be on you, on your hips and it's not necessarily going to be comfortable but the belt loops just keep it in place with a bowline tied at that end if this rope was tied solid to one of these trees here I could lean back with all of my weight and not be concerned about moving so there you go, one last time, the quick method and the use of the bowline so there you go the use of the bowline, most people see it as the rescue knot so if I was at the bottom of a canyon, for example, and someone had a rope and they threw it to me, that is what I would tie. I'd tie it to myself to be able to climb out. And of course, the re one of the other reasons for wanting to know how to tie it loose of an object is if you've got a friend down the bottom of a cliff or a canyon or in a river or whatever it might be, they might, one, not be able to tie uh, a bowline, as in physically they might not, um, you know, if they're fl floating down a river and you're doing a river rescue, tie a bowl and toss it in they can put it over themselves you know they can't tie the knot in the water they also might not know how to so being able to tie it loose and being able to give it to someone they can then you obviously then have to make it larger than them uh, as long as it is larger than their legs the easiest thing is for them to put it up over their legs because it might not go over their shoulders which is a good thing because it means you can hook them underneath the armpits but providing it will go over the legs you'll be able to get them into a bowl and rescue and then you can pull them out of whatever you need to. So there you go, that is the bowline. The next knot that I want to show you is called the trucker's hitch. Now you may have heard it if you are into the bushcraft community here on YouTube. A lot of people use this, I did for a while, in their tarp ridge lines. But this is works, I find, a lot better with larger rope like this. So to do this, this is a tensioning knot that we can use for lines and things like that. We need one end secured already so that has been done uh, on that end I have it tied to the tree using a bowline like I've showed you earlier on this end what we're going to do is come around the tree now we need to pull all of our slack through the tree uh, I'm actually going to do it from right to left here so we need to pull all of the slack around the tree so I'll be back in a minute once, once we've got it around our tree we twist in a loop so we need to slacken it off and twist in a loop, like so. We then, and we want to do this a reasonable distance from our tree. I'm working we're here with about uh, three feet from the tree where that loop is. Then lay that loop towards the tree. And then push through another loop, like so, and pull it back towards our tree. And that creates this quick release loop here that if we pull on this end, just comes undone. And that's one of the good things about the trucker hitch. Now, it's a little bit of a faff here to keep this rope at height, so whilst you're doing this. So that is one thing with this, with a heavy rope that wants to fall down the tree. So create our loop. We then need to pass our whole line a rope through. So again, with a rope this long, it'll take me a minute.
So, there we go. So now what we can do is pull our line towards this tree. And what that does is it tensions up the whole rope. And that's what this is. And it acts like a pulley. And we're able to put a remarkable amount of force into this very easily. And in fact, we can lean back with all of our weight and really tension this up. To the point at which you could use it as a slack line. Now, if you're doing this for a ridge line for your tarp, you can then do a pinch technique here, which allows you to uh, tie it off. But the issue we find with doing it with this is that you'll never keep the tension. Now, one thing you can do to help keep the tension is put the line through this loop again. And if you put it on top rather than underneath, it creates its own little locking system that helps, but I'm not putting the whole line through again. So in this case, what we could do is just run it around the tree and actually just that, run it around the tree and then lock it off with a little weird hitch thing. And this is all it really is here. This is our trucker's hitch. trapped in the outdoors. One of the uses of this knot is you can use it in a ridge line of, for your tarp. But I don't tend to anymore. I don't think you need the ability to get a tarp ridge line this tight, realistically. Um, so the other use, of course, and the reason it's called a trucker's hitch is because it was used uh, but it's used by truckers and lorry drivers and transport vehicles. So one of the really useful things for this is you can, if you've got a rope or a strap that's going over the top of cargo on the back of a trailer, you can use this to tie it down really nice and secure. So the bowline falls into a category of what we refer to as end of line loops, as in it's a loop that you tie at the end of a rope. Now I've shown before how to tie a overhand loop in the end of a rope and that does have its uses in simple applications maybe um, you know even that could be used to do a throw line to be able to throw it over a branch that provides a bit of weight there on the end uh, and a loop that you could grab but another really useful one and a better version of that is the figure eight so I'm going to show you the figure of eight and then I'm going to show you the figure eight involving a loop so the figure of eight very simply is a number eight. So the simplest way to do this is to take your line about, I don't know, foot and a half, two feet in, create a, uh, create a loop. Again, to quickly clarify in, ro to clarify in rope work, that is a loop, that is a bite. Again, loop, bite. So create a loop as in twist it over itself. Then leave your long end falling to the ground and your short end in your right hand if you're right-handed of course swap it if you're left-handed make it work for you take the line around the drop line there and place the end through that loop that you created and that creates a figure eight and you can see there that it looks like a number eight and if you turn it on its side of course it looks like an infinity sign now if you want a i think the word is mnemonic to remember that, create a monster, strangle the monster, and poke the monster in the eye. You could change monster to be whatever you want. You could say, uh, create a head. There's your head, strangle the head, and poke the head in an eye, and you've got a figure of eight. Um, obviously that might sound childish, but for some people that is what you need, you need something like that and of course when I work with scouts and stuff, uh, using things like that to help them remember it is always helpful. Now what you'll see, because I've been untying the figure of eight a lot, is it unties really easily and that's actually the benefit of a figure of eight over a simple overhand. So of course an overhand knot does the same thing in the end of the day, it puts a knot where the line comes in and out of the same side. So there we've got the figure of eight, there we've got the overhand. Now if you put a 
if you put a lot of weight onto an overhand, you'll find that it's very difficult to untie. Whereas you find that a figure of eight, especially in a climbing rope, no matter how much weight you put on that, you will find that it will very easily come apart. You can up the figure of eight to a figure of eight on a bite or a bite with a figure of eight or anything along those lines, however you want to call it. So to do this, create a bite. Now you want to make it quite a large bite to make this easier. Um, you can do it smaller, but with a rope this size it's easier at larger. So I've got, I don't know, about a two and a half, three feet bite there. Um, pretend that this is the same as this. And what I mean by that is this now becomes the end of a rope. So create a loop using both strands. This is now our loose end. Run it round, push it through, pull tight. And what you'll see is you've effectively got a double, two lines doing the figure of eight with a loop on the end. Again, the same, uh, I think the word is mnemonic, correct me if I'm wrong. Again, create a head or a zombie or a monster, strangle it, stab it in the eye, pull tight, and you have a figure of eight. Now, again, if you wanted to, you could put a security knot on the end of that doing it the same way as did with the bowl around the tree. That will, you know, that's gonna go nowhere. You could quite easily hang a lot of weight off of that. And that's one of the things you, figure of eight knots are mostly used in terms of the outdoors in climbing. Now, some people will take a figure of eight, put a carabiner on the end, probably a slightly more durable carabiner than this, considering it's not weight weighted, and clip that to the attachment point on the front of their harness. However, you'll also find that there will be people that don't like that because that involves a carabiner taking body weight. Um, and even if it is a climbing weighted carabiner, even I, who's not a climber, wouldn't trust a, all of my body weight and connection to a carabiner. So what you'll find is what a lot of them do is go quite a bit in from the end, tie that figure of eight, that's a bit too far from the end. Again, I'm not a climber, so this is beyond my skill set, somewhat. So they'll tie a loose figure of eight. They'll then pass that through uh, uh, an attachment point, uh, like the front attachment point, and then simply feed that rope back through the figure of eight, as I'm doing here and end up with a double figure of eight. That's the other way of tying it, is to tie a single figure of eight and then tie it again. But if you're, that is only really necessary if you're tying a figure of eight to something, as in you're tying a figure of eight loop to something where they're both gonna be sealed. If you're just tying it because you want a loop in the end of a rope, because of course you can do an overhand loop, a double overhand loop like so. Again, you tend to find that these don't come undone as very well, or they come undone really easily. So if you're going to tie a simple end of line loop that it doesn't, because you don't always need to use a bowline, just tie a figure of eight using that method, and that works perfectly well. So just typical, as I'm just about finished here, the uh, rain comes on, so shell jacket is out. Now, that is basically all of what I wanted to show you in this video. That's some uh, skills that work, in my opinion, rope work skills that work better with larger ropes, or certainly easier to demonstrate with larger ropes, and ones that have quite a lot of genuine practical purposes. Now, of course, just as is with the smaller cord, like the power cord we used in the previous video, you then need to know, if you're gonna use rope, you need to know how to pack it away neatly. So, it's a little bit more complicated with climbing ropes, and as I say, I'm not a climber, but uh, I learnt this skill uh, the same way climbers did, uh, and this is apparently what climbers do. So the first thing you need is the two ends of your rope. So I've got one here, I can't see the other one. Um, there we go, there's the other one. So you need the two ends of your rope. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing this uh, hanking method. One involves starting with the middle of the rope and one involves starting with the ends of the rope. The way I like to do it is to start with the ends of the rope and I'll explain why. 
later. So what you do is you take the two ends of your rope, you line them up, you stretch, you hold it, and you stretch out not fully, but comfortably, and you place that over your shoulder. Now for me, that comes down to about, you know, about my waist. Slightly less than that is what I'm looking for. I then grab the left bit at that height and do the same and place it over my shoulder. And you repeat that, swapping sides, for the full length, just about, of your rope. Trying to keep the ends at as close to the same place every time as you possibly can. becomes remarkably comfortable, you kind of get a bit of a headrest. If it gets tangled on the sticks or on itself, it, because it's over your shoulders it's actually quite good because you can then use your hands still to uh, untie knots and things in the rope, like this here. I'll take that last one off and do it again. So, I'm now at a point where I've got just over the length of the bottom of here to the ground left. I've got this much, and that's where we're going to stop. We then place our hands round and take it off our shoulders. And what you want to do is kind of hang it on one hand so that it's in the middle and it sits equally. Then taking your end, you want to come down just over halfway and wrap around and cross that wrap over I'll come a bit closer cross that wrap over and now start wrapping up the way and you want to wrap two or three times then push the two lines through that bit but not all the way leave a loop on this side then place that loop through that other loop there I then put a carabiner on there and you can then hang the rope up and it stays nice and neat. You might want some more wraps in that but that's more than enough for me. And that's what the difference between starting with the ends and starting with the middle. If you start with the middle you end up with the two loose ends here which you could then tie to something uh, and actually one of the values of that is if you're going to wear your rope on your back you can leave quite a bit of slack and you can tie it to yourself as a backpack. If you're looking to just hang it on a carabiner or by a stick or whatever, start with the ends and get a loop. So there we go guys, that is some fundamental large scale rope skills that can be used in lots of different ways. Hopefully you liked this video, if you did make sure to leave a like down below uh, and subscribe if you're new here. Leave a comment whilst you're down there and until next time, bye for now.